shortly. Meantime, a big story to watch today is what is coming next for the mayor of Baltimore, Catherine Pugh. Last week, there were FBI raids at her home and her office at City Hall, clearly targeting her book deals, the Healthy Holly books. Catherine Pugh's attorney said at that time she's not lucid enough to make decisions about her future, but he did point to today as a day when that could change. Now, in the meantime, Baltimore City Council members taking steps trying to change the balance of power at City Hall. WMAR 2 News' Megan Knight is there this morning, and Megan, one of the amendments being considered would be City Council's ability to vote and give them a way to get rid of a mayor in the future. Yeah, it's a pretty big amendment there on the table, Christian. That amendment would require a three-fourths vote by the Baltimore City Council in order to impeach a mayor or remove the mayor from office. This is one of four amendments that was introduced to the City Council last night. They all passed the first reading, so that means they're now moving on to their committees. Now, as the law stands right now, the only way the mayor of Baltimore can be removed from office is if he or she is convicted of a crime. And so far, Mayor Catherine Pugh has not been charged with anything. The other amendments include making it possible for the city councilors to add items to the budget and reduce the number of votes needed to override a mayoral veto. Councilman Brandon Scott also wants to add a city administrator to the mix. He says that job would bring Baltimore more in line with how other cities across the country operate. If the mayor wants to remove the chief administrative officer, my colleagues behind me would have to vote to approve that. Baltimore City's government needs to be highly functioning in order for us to face the tough issues facing us today. We cannot do that with a chief executive that is also the chief administrator. Now, if these amendments are make their way through the committee and they are passed by the full council, then they will go before the city voters. We're told that they will appear on the ballot in November of 2020. We're live at City Hall on Megan Knight, WMAR 2 News.